Today, Tech Meets Lego will be telling you how in just a little bit, but first we want to keep you updated with the latest tech news, both locally and internationally. And of course, we have a candid conversation with Grace Givaga coming up in the Tech Talk interview. My name is Stephanie Ayata and the hashtag to use is Tech on Tech. With the ever-evolving world, we are asking you today, what are your thoughts on adaptation of humanoid robots? These are robots that perform human functions. Talk to us, the hashtag to use is Tech on Tech at KBC Channel 1. In tech news, our e-insurance startup bags 1.2 billion in Series A drive and internationally Elon Musk presents Optimus. This is a humanoid robot. More details in our tech news roundup. E-insurance firm Turaco has netted 10 million US dollars in a Series A equity round led by African Vest via a Cathay African Vest Innovation Fund and existing investor Novasta Ventures. Founded in 2019, Turaco is a distributor, broker, and key customer interface between the underwriter and the end consumer. Through its active partnership, the insurance tech has designed and delivered a suit of medical, life, assets and vehicle insurance packages across Nigeria, Kenya, and Uganda. Turaco is building in a largely untapped sector, opening up a huge market and innovating for mass market consumers by providing a solution that will drive inclusive insurance. Targeted at underserved customers and low-income earners, Turaco embeds its service as a white-labeled offering that is bundled with a partner's core product or service while integrating with the existing payment processes to collect premiums. With AI integration that allows for easy collaboration with external partners, Turaco enables companies to integrate insurance into their products and services efficiently and at no additional risk or cost. In 2019, Turaco partnered with MCOPA to embed insurance with MCOPA's product for the company's customers and direct sales representatives. Since its launch, the technology-enabled insurance platform loads itself as a market leader at the forefront of innovative insurance solutions. Tech billionaire Elon Musk has presented the latest prototype of a humanoid robot being developed by his Tesla electric car company. Optimus appeared on a stage at Silicon Valley event where it waved to the audience and raised its knees. The CEO said the robot was work in progress but could be on sale to the public in the next three to five years, producing masses at a lower cost than 20,000 US dollars. Tesla's mass market robots will be Tested by working jobs in the car factories, company engineer say. The prototype was wheeled on stage during an annual Tesla AI Day presentation. People were shown a video of Optimus performing simple tasks such as watering plants, carrying boxes, and lifting metal bars. Investors and financial analysts have expressed skepticism that Tesla will turn to robotics, advising it to focus instead on projects closer to Tesla's core business of of electric cars. But Mr. Musk said he wanted to solve one of the toughest problems of artificial intelligence, how to make a machine that can replace a human. The entrepreneur who once warned of artificial intelligence being a threat to humanity said that Tesla wanted to make sure the transition to a society in which robots did the work and people reaped the benefits was a safe one. Today in Tech of the Week and Innovators Club, we bring you a team that prides itself in being the first virtual legal workspace in Kenya. They have brought innovation into the legal sector. Here it is. My name is Calvin Mwenda Njage. I'm the co-founder of Legal Technologies Kenya Limited. I'm the chief of operation and I'm also a lawyer by profession. In uh, simple terms, um, Legal, Legal Technologies Kenya Limited is a tech company aimed at providing tech solutions 
for the legal practice of the legal sector in Kenya. Legal Technologies Kenya Limited was founded uh, in December of 2020 and it was incorporated in, the, in February of 2021. Uh, it is owned by two co-founders, uh, myself, Calvin, and Nelson Curry, who is also a lawyer and a tech guru. For me, it was born more out of need because uh, after I finished my law degree and went to law school, I found job opportunities really hard to come by. Uh, at the same time, Nelson, who was a tech enthusiast and a lawyer as well, was going through more or less a similar stage in life, but he was very, always very interested in merging technology and the law. So when we came together, we came up with a company, we founded the company, and then we started building our product, which is now LegalPointServices.com. Legal Point Services uh, solves a problem. The problem is born out of young lawyers who are fresh out of school uh, being unable to uh, find gainful employment. You find that uh, law firms are very, very saturated, or rather, too few law firms for too many lawyers. Uh, so we came up with this solution mm -hmm. to uh, help uh, young lawyers to get gainful employment and work. We combined our expertise as lawyers and IT experts and we started building this program from scratch. Uh, we had uh, people who were coding and people who were doing research uh, so that to, so as to build the product and bring it to fruition. The beta version uh, launched in November of 2021 and then we launched the full version in March of 2022. It does help in revolutionizing the legal sector in a few ways or rather several ways. Uh, first of all, it eases access to justice for the people out here, for let's say just Kenyans. Um, it also uh, brings about the transformation, or rather the transition from um, the physical working spaces to, to more digital working spaces. Um, it saves on costs for advocates who do not have to uh, use a lot of money setting up physical offices to get work or to expect clients to walk into their offices. When a client just goes online, they can just access an advocate from anywhere remotely. Uh, it also increases jobs for these legal practitioners because obviously you cannot compare referrals and walk-ins with something you just have to go online and find. Yeah, you will find more interactions online. Uh, it also increases efficiency of legal work uh, through tools such as document automation, video conferencing. You can video conference with your clients and you can just um, communicating as well. We provide even email services on our platform. Um, it gives the clients more control, gives them more control over the process, the legal process that their advocate is undertaking because they are able to follow the workflow on, on the platform. My name is Nelson Curry. I am the co-founder and chief executive officer of Legal Technologies Kenya Limited. We allow advocates to sign up and connect these advocates to people who are in need of legal services, be they individuals such as yourself or businesses, mostly targeting SMEs and corporates. So um, how it works is that on the front end we've built it using hypertext markup language, uh, cascading style sheets, and the framework that we use for styling and uh, responsiveness is called Bootstrap. And on the back end, uh, our core programming language is Python. We chose this because it's very extensible, especially given the fact that we are now transitioning into uh, artificial intelligence and blockchain technology. Also, um, the database that we use is called PostgreSQL. Uh, we chose this because it allows us to store relational data in the database. Beyond that, we also use Redis for caching. Uh, it allows for 
improvements in speed of our application. When we started out, um, we hadn't figured out that speed could be a challenge, but once we implemented Redis, we now experience up to five times the speed that we had when we were starting out. Then we also use, uh, we stored data, especially images and documents, because that's a lot of what, a lot of the file types that advocates require, we store them as blobs in our databases to allow for easy and quick access. We use Cloudflare uh, DNS for security purposes. And then we use Linux servers that we, uh, uh, that we are containerized on the Azure Cloud service by Microsoft. Uh, my name is William Ocheno. I'm the head of innovation and product development at Legal Tech Kenya. In Legal Point, we actually use AI in a number of ways, four major ones, actually. And the whole AI module is called Artemis. Still in the beta stages, but still workable. So one of the things it does, um, as you've seen, that Legal Point is a virtual uh, workspace that connects uh, legal service providers to clients, right? Now, depending on the areas of specialization um, for those legal service providers and the kind of problem that the client wants, then our AI module uh, will infer uh, from the two and get to match the right advocate or the right, uh, right lawyer to the right client. Now, one other way that Artemis is being used as well is um, let's consider a situation where um, an, an advocate and a client have already been connected and they've been communicating. But it reaches a point in time where um, the advocate is offline while the client is online and, well, and trying to reach that particular legal service provider. Now what Artemis will do is, um, it will try to respond to the messages the client is sending to the advocate on behalf of the advocate. Now when the advocate comes back online, then he'll be able to see the whole correspondence. Now that is one of the um, uh, processes that we're using Artemis for that natural language processing. Um, in addition to that, um, since we are also providing a virtual office for the advocate, not only concentrating on the client, then um, we are able to predict cases, litigation cases especially. Um, so if you're a client and you're seeking legal services or if you're an advocate who's doing research, then you'll be able to like infer what the outcome may be on a particular case. Then finally, what we're using Artemis for is um, document processing. Now we have those common contracts that uh, legal service providers normally draft. Sometimes they, be, uh, they may become too bulky, too wordy, things like that, and you want to save time and you don't want to repeat t uh, time and time again. So what Artemis will do is, you tell, um, tell her that, okay, this is the kind of document I want, and from that, it will just generate the document for you. All you have to provide is um, the clauses that you want to choose or and the parties involved. That is how we are using AI in Legal Point. My name is Carol Nguyo. I'm the head of business development at Legal Tech. And today I'm going to take you through the user interface of Legal Point Services, our product. For a person who's looking for legal services, so you sign in with your email and your password. After you sign in, the first thing you'll see is the dashboard, um, which will show you the invoices that you have. So the, the new invoices that you have, the total amount that you need to pay, your pending requests in terms of if you reached out to a lawyer or an advocate and maybe they are yet to get back to you, that's where you'll see that. And then if you have any scheduled items for the day, that's what you will find there. Um, in terms of how to get services, on our menu side, you will find an icon written services. You can click on that and then you click on request a service. When you click on that, you will find an array of services that can be offered. You provide details about your service and then if you need to attach a document, you attach the document. So I'm just going to do a test run and have submit that um, and maybe change the date in terms of the day I would like this matter to be dealt with and then submit. And then here I'll have my service requested and then up here I will see the service providers that are needed for them 
the service providers that are available to deal with my issue and I can just click of one, on one of the service providers and have my issue sorted by them. So that's how you have your services, how you get legal services through our platform. As an advocate, once you've created your account, um, all you'll do is enter your credentials and sign in. When you sign in, this is the first um, thing that you'll see. And for advocates, you won't get access to your account immediately. We have to vet you and in order to protect um, the people who are looking for legal services. So we have to go through LSK and see whether you are a credible advocate before we allow you onto our platform. So on, the da on your dashboard, you will see um, the income that you've gotten for the month, the number of services and the number of clients, any recent messages and any news and updates. Um, also, we have, you can integrate it with your personal email so that you can see your emails and you can create emails through this platform. We also have a matter management platform where um, you can create a new matter you can create a new matter um, depending on what what client it is, um, what um, what type of what type of uh, matter you're dealing with, be it civil, criminal. You can always do that um, and create a matter on our platform. And then here you can see requests. In case anyone has requested your services, you can see them through the dashboard as well um, we also have a diary where you can add to your schedule maybe if you we have a court calendar where you can schedule your court dates and also a personal calendar where you can have um, you can schedule other dates so that you can be up to date with everything and can be able to treat to um, deal with your client in the most professional and efficient manner. We do have a system where the clients can give us feedback about their experiences with their advocates so that people can trust our platform and know that they can be served as best as possible through our platform. That's about it from Tech of the Week. Now we join the lovely Grace Githaiga in the studio for a candid conversation. Let's listen in. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on this uh, interview section of Take on Tech. Um, it's a program that brings you technological concepts and debates and breaks them down in an untech way. Now, October is the Cyber Security Month all over the world. So we celebrate cyber security activities, be they laws, be they events, be they, uh, you know, be they whatever activities that are in place. But why, you'd, why the need to celebrate or to recognize cyber security and provide it a full month? Uh, and that's, uh, you know, f all over the world because every country is celebrating. In the studio to help us understand why, uh, you know, issues of cyber security and why October is the cyber security month, we have Anthony Moyuro. Anthony is the president of the Information Systems Audit and Control Association, in in short, ISACA. Uh, Anthony, karibu sana to the program. Thank uh, you. And thank you for again agreeing to be interviewed in this uh, section. Um, now, tell us, uh, before we go into the celebration of cyber, you know, the Cyber Security Month, tell us, uh, what are cyber threats that Kenyans face? Mm. Or what, what would you consider cyber security threats that we in Kenya face? Right, thank you for hosting me. Um, I think I would summarize it this way. Um, of course, cyber threats normally evolve. Um, and when we talk about some of these threats, these are the, 
the, the, the agents that ideally would pose any harm to an individual, particularly in the cyberspace. So we'd be looking at things like malwares, malicious softwares, and these are programmed, um, these are, you know, programs that ideally have a malicious code injected in it so that if it gets to your machine, either it's going to encrypt your machine or rather it's going to steal or it's going to do something that is not right. Mm -hmm. People want to steal your passwords and things like that. And then, of course, you have a variant, mm -hmm. the famous one, which is ransomware. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what a ransomware software, a ransom software, the short form of ransomware, um, basically what it does is that it encrypts your data when it comes to your machine. And this has been very pervasive mm. because now cyber attackers have become very, very um, ingenious, if I may call that, mm. call them that, in terms of how they can make money and monetize this effectively and at scale. Okay, now, as, as, as the president of ISACA and, and, and as someone who is involved in capacity building and in ensuring that uh, we have uh, enough capacity in this area of security. Uh, would you say that we have hum enough human resource uh, in Kenya to handle the ever increasing cyber security threats? Okay, the straight answer is no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we need more people. And one of the things that we are suffering from is a shortage of skills and competencies to fill the gap of what the demand is in the market. Mm -hmm. Right now we are having a challenge that the few cyber experts that we have um, are not sufficient or rather are not enough. And that's why we, we've taken a lot of steps to radically you know, upskill, train, and attract more people into the field. Because mm -hmm. globally now you'd be talking about four point something million in terms of the shortfall, the gap. Four point something million jobs need to be filled. Yeah? But now in Kenya, that is also a challenge mm -hmm. because you find many organizations are struggling, including even SMEs and small businesses. They're wondering, so how can we solve this thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's one of the problem areas that we have. And as a SACA, we are training even young people. We have even boot camps. Um, at, um, we have a program that is dubbed CSX. So we normally host and run boot camps where we attract and train students on how things to do with them, you know, security and even ethical hacking. Wow, OK. Um, uh, very good on that. So uh, take on tech. We'll take a short break. And when we return, we'll go now into why October is the cybersecurity month. Uh, keep watching. Uh, please continue following us on our social media handles. And that's at KBC Channel 1 across all platforms. Keep watching. <music> You're watching the interview section of Take on Tech. In the studio, we have Anthony Muyuro, who is the president from ISACA, and he's talking to us about cybersecurity issues and cybersecurity month. Now, Anthony, October is the cybersecurity month all over the world. Tell us more about it. Okay. So uh, from the year 2004, um, I think the U.S. president is, uh, ideally mandated and send a guideline that October will be an, the official cybersecurity month, right? So this has ideally gained a lot of momentum across all, many, all over the world. So in October, what we do is basically one of the biggest challenges that we have in cybersecurity is awareness. People do not know what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. People do not understand, many people do not understand the threats the issues and how to protect themselves. So this is a month that has been set aside to help bridge that knowledge gap mm -hmm. so that people can be made more aware. What is right behavior? What are the do's and what are the don'ts? What should they be concerned about? How can they tell if there's a cyber attack? 
who do they respond to? How do they respond to some of those issues? And what are some of the basic tenets and fundamentals that they need to learn even as consumers of data and consumers of some of the technologies that we have? So we do that across many professional spheres, um, different organizations um, um, also do that quite well. The Communications Authority of Kenya, given that their mandate also is to um, be sort of the regulator on cyber security or quasi-regulator working with uh, NC4. So pretty much the mandate of an awareness is extremely important even as a national, at a national level. Mm -hmm. So you'd have different players that do that. So, But the whole essence is to um, communicate effectively um, on the issues and why cybersecurity is important to demystify mm -hmm. because you want to take it down um, and speak to in a less technical manner mm -hmm. so that people can connect and understand that how do they protect themselves, even their mobile phones? Mm -hmm. What are some of the basic things? Mm -hmm. Because it concerns them. How do they protect their children? Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about child online protection, mm -hmm. you know, because we've seen a lot of predators online. They're preying on young children, innocent young children. And one of the things that we are saying is that this is a responsibility for everyone because cyber security is everyone's responsibility. So how then do we disseminate this information in an actionable manner, in a simplified form that people will understand, connect and know what they're supposed to do? You'd be surprised that most and the defense against cyber threats is knowledge dependent. Um before we go just one you know closing remarks all right uh, and uh, uh, as you do that maybe a message during this month of cyber security awareness great um and like i said earlier we're living in a day and age where technology is the norm everything we do right now is centric around technology so how we consume and how we use and how we engage with technology becomes also very important so we need to also be aware there are threats out there same way that they are good guys, they are also bad people. And we need to train and rather equip ourselves with the right knowledge to ensure that we are protecting ourselves. We are doing the right things. Things like cyber hygiene. You have a device, have a password. Um, Wi-Fi, have a password. Are you using the right Wi-Fi? Are you using an encrypted channel? You need to subscribe to best practices um, on the machines running updates, things to do with that. Do not fall prey to some of the phishing attempts, which is an increasing concern because that is where there is this we call human hacking. Um, and this is where they use this manipulation and deception tactics mm -hmm. um, to deceive people. Um, so you need to be alert. Mm -hmm. um, people calling you, asking you for your bank details. Normally, mm -hmm. your banker will not do that. Mm -hmm ordinarily so. Um, some of them who are calling you purporting that there's a payment you need to make mm -hmm. and some of them have become very very creative on how they do this. Mm -hmm. So you need to also understand uh, the telltale signs of a cyber attack mm -hmm. or an attempt to defraud you right. so that when you're equipped with that information you can be able to defend yourself because like I said earlier knowledge is power mm -hmm. and in cyber security especially for this month of cyber security we need people to be aware mm -hmm. and what they do not know, they need to seek this information. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, what a way to end uh, the interview section. Uh, thank you so much, Anthony Moyuru. Uh, that's it from the interview section. Uh, we were speaking with Anthony Moyuru, the president of ISACA, and he was speaking to us about uh, October being the Cyber Security Awareness uh, Month and he's given us tips on wha what we need to be alert to and to stay safe online. My name is Grace Gidaiga, keep watching. We now draw the curtains on today's show, but as you know, the conversation never stops. The question of the day, we are asking you, what are your thoughts on humanoid robots? This is in respect to the ever-evolving world in matters technology. Talk to us, the hashtag to use is take on tech at KBC Channel 1. My personal handle is at Stephanie underscore Ayeta. Let's meet next week, same time, same place. Until then, let's keep it tech. Adios.